Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin PF, and on today's episode, we've got Whiskey of the Month from March 2022. Now, if you're new to these videos, new to the channel, Basically what I do on these videos here is to round up my month in uh, whiskey reviews. Sometimes there's, you know, like I've done like two or three or four or even five, depending on how I've, my output's been that month. This month I've got four, and what I'll do is I'll just go through each in turn of the order I release them in and then pick my favourite. And uh, that'll be my whiskey of the month, and then those whiskies of the month will go into the final draw for whiskey of the year in December. There you go. Let's get into it then and we'll see what we covered this month. Uh, you can always check out my video reviews of these in the description below because I obviously have already covered all of these. So if you want to see more information about each one, please do go and check that out. Let's get into the first one then. So the first one we covered then was the Cotswolds Reserve. I always want to say Bourbon Reserve, but that's something slightly different. So it's just called Cotswolds, Cotswolds Reserve. Um, this one, uh, I got it in, in two different ways. I actually got two bottles of this. Um, I was sent a bottle by fan and uh, and then by my Somerton Club uh, subscription that's the best way I guess to say that and um, I ended up opening one of the bottles and then sending the full bottle back to the guy who sent me the bottle of this uh, because he wanted me to review it um, yeah roundup of my thoughts on that was that it's I mean it's great it's good whiskey uh, Cotswolds DNA all over it but the price point I think was a little bit weird um, in where it fits in I'm sure it's valid for the quality of the whiskey but in my opinion you should spend a little bit more and get some of the better bottles that they make or spend a hell of a lot less and get the standard release this one kind of fits in a bit of a no man's land um, next up we've got the Disciples McDuff McDuff aged 13 years from uh, Heroes and Heretics again a lovely drop but um, breaching £100 so very expensive very good, you know, it's just a very good whiskey, but, you know, that's what I said about that. Uh, then we've got the Tullabadeen Sovereign, sitting against some real strong competition here. But obviously, one of the things I talk about on the channel frequently is not necessarily how great the whiskey is, because there's enough people that do that. Um, you know, if I scored or rated purely on which whiskey was the best quality, then that's fine, but that doesn't help you guys out there save a few quid or whatever. So yeah, so this one here is in some stiff competition, but in its price bracket, I got this for like 25 quid. You know, the RRP is like 37, 35 quid, which is a joke. You know, obviously never never spend that unless you have no choice. If you're in some territories around the world where you've got no choice, sorry, but yeah, I got this on Amazon for like 25 quid. Pretty much a bargain at that price. Um, obviously it's a basic dram, so you know, it, it's overall quality is diminished in comparison to the rest of these, but the price point is really what stands out here. And then finally, we've got this, um, you know, technically not whiskey, of course, although it's been, it was distilled in the traditional way. Um, it, it was then aged in a, in a, a, a rapid aging reactor in Copenhagen. Um, but it, a peated whiskey, no less, and I, I actually think it would challenge a lot of Scottish whiskies for what it is. Um, that said, problematic because it's um, technically not a whiskey, but also uh, the price point is going to be high based on just how it's made and it's European so getting it in the UK is going to be an added expense. So yeah, a challenging one this time because we've got a, a lot of um, higher expense whiskies for sure and one kind of budget one. Um, but I have to say, um, so usually I kind of make a general rule to um, make sure that it actually fits the bill of a whiskey officially. But I'm going to break that rule this month because I want to declare my whiskey of the month as the Arbide from ETOH. Now, there's a reason for that. Uh, yes, it isn't a whiskey, um, but it compares to whiskey so well, and it's such a nice whiskey. It's so it's so full of flavour and so rich and peated that it's worth the effort, I think. You know, maybe not for the average drinker. The expense of this, getting this over from Denmark is going to be a little bit a little bit high. But for the the more I don't want to say discerning, but for the for the more energetic collector who likes um, interesting things and maybe has a few extra quid lying around, definitely one hundred percent go and check this one out because it's truly an excellent whiskey, even though it isn't a whiskey. There you go. So yeah, for one one month only. Maybe not one month only, but I'm going to break my usual rule and pick a non-whiskey as my whiskey of the month of March 2022, and that is the ETOH Arbide. And I'll put some links in the description below if you want to see more on that. 
thanks for watching and I'll see you again next month, hopefully on my normal reviews.